Welcome to our presentation on cyanide poisoning. Cyanide poisoning has a long-standing history around the globe. In early 1942, Zyklon B, which contained hydrogen cyanide, emerged as the preferred killing tool of Nazi Germany for use in extermination camps during the Holocaust. The chemical was used to kill roughly 1 million people in gas chambers installed in extermination camps at Auschwitz, Birkenau, Maginot, and elsewhere. The People's Temple Agricultural Project, better known by its informal name Jonestown, was a remote settlement in Guyana established by the People's Temple, a San Francisco-based cult under the leadership of Jim Jones. Jim Jones had taken some of his followers and fled to Guyana to establish his compound amidst allegations of criminal wrongdoing and abuse. In 1978, Congressman Leo Ryan's office had received numerous phone calls from concerned family members of people in the cult, stating their loved ones were being abused and were concerned about their safety and welfare. Congressman Ryan boarded a plane along with several of his aides and went to Jonestown to investigate and see for themselves what was going on. They met with several of the people within the compound, including Jim Jones. They gathered their information. They assured Jones that everything seemed fine. When they went to the airstrip to board the plane to leave Guyana, however, Jones had sent several of his followers with high power rifles to meet them. They opened fire on Congressman Leo Ryan, killing him and four others. One of Congressman Ryan's aides, Jackie Spear, was shot and critically injured, but hit out in a baggage claim until rescued 22 hours later. During the time of the shooting on the airstrip, Jones realized that his secrets would get out to the rest of the world. He orchestrated a mass suicide murder after convincing his devoted followers to end their lives by lining up and drinking a liquid prepared in a large metal tub with grape flavor aid poisoned with diphenhydramine, promethazine, chlorpromazine, chloroquine, chlorohydrate, valium, and cyanide. On that day, 909 people died as a result, including men, women, and children. Congressman Ryan's aide, Jackie Spear went on to be a U.S. representative for California's 14th Congressional District. One of the greatest tragedies to befall Rhode Island history is the Station Nightclub fire. On a freezing cold evening, February 20th, 2003, more than 400 patrons crowded the small wooden nightclub in West Warwick. They had gone to see the band Great White, which was a popular rock tribute band. During the performance, Great White had ignited several pyrotechnics, which ignited the soundproofing foam on the walls and the ceilings of the nightclub. At 11.07, fire broke out, and by 11.07 and 38 seconds, the fire alarms had sounded. By 11.08, it was lights out in the nightclub. What had started as an orderly evacuation turned to chaos as people rushed for safety outside the front door but came face to face with a bottleneck of people who had fallen and tripped over one another. By 11.10, the nightclub was fully involved and by 11.13, the last of the survivors walked down on his own down the ramp of the front of the building. More than 100 people died and over 240 people were critically injured in this fire. It comes to our cyanide poisoning presentation for this reason. A room becomes untenable for people when any of the following occur. The temperature exceeds 120 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit. A heat flux exceeds 2.5 kilowatts per meter square or the oxygen volume fraction drops below 12%. The lowest concentration of a material in the air that has been reported to have caused death in humans is termed the lethal concentration low or LCLO. The LCLO inhalation for hydrogen cyanide is reported at 0.02% for five minutes of exposure, and that for carbon monoxide is listed as 0.5% for five minutes of exposure. In mock-up tests done based on the station nightclub fire, they found that the hydrogen cyanide concentration exceeded the LCLO in less than 75 seconds, and the carbon monoxide concentration reached its LCO in less than 92 seconds. Remember, it took 38 seconds for the fire alarm to sound, and the nightclub was fully involved at 11.13 p.m.
So it is cyanide, according to the CDC, it's a liquid, colorless gas, or comes in crystal form. The colorless gas comes in a form of hydrogen cyanide or cyanogen chloride. In the crystal form, it comes in the form of sodium cyanide or potassium cyanide. The small lipid soluble molecule has rapid penetration, can be distributed into the body within seconds, and death can occur within seconds or minutes after a large dose. Cyanide can be ingested through nitroprusside, which is a medication, cassava, lima beans, apricots, apples, peaches, almonds, or cigarette smoke. Inhalation of cyanide with smoke and structure fires remains the number one source of cyanide poisoning in the United States. This is during the fire or during overhaul. Cyanide may also be manufactured and is used in metal polishing and insecticides. Cyanide is developed from an incomplete combustion of any material containing nitrogen, such as plastic, vinyl, wood, or silk. One has to be aware that cyanide is still produced when the fire is only glowing embers. These are a couple CDC recommendations to avoid absorption. Quickly take off clothing that may have cyanide on it. Any clothing that has to be pulled over the head should be cut off the body instead of pulled over the head. If you are helping other people remove their clothing, try to avoid touching any contaminated areas and remove the clothing as quickly as possible. So 50 years ago, I'm certain firefighters never thought that the ants would be washing their gear. But now, now that we know that the fire gear that you wear to protect yourself in a fire is covered with toxins and potentially cyanide. Are you washing your gear? Are you leaving it at the station or taking it home with you? Are you actually taking toxins and cyanide home to your family unsuspectingly? In order to understand cyanide poisoning and how it affects the body, you have to know a little bit about the human cell. The cell is the basic building block of all living things. The human body is composed of trillions of cells. They provide structure for the body, take in nutrients from food, convert those nutrients into energy, and carry out specialized functions. They contain the body's hereditary material and can make copies of themselves. Cells have many parts, each with a different function. Some of these parts, called organelles, are specialized structures that perform certain tasks within the cell. Human cells contain the following major parts. The cytoplasm, cytoskeleton, Golgi apparatus, nucleus, mitochondria, which will be very important in our discussion in the next few minutes. The endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes and peroxisomes, the plasma membrane, and ribosomes. Mitochondria are membrane-bound cell organelles. They generate most of the chemical energy needed to power the cell's biochemical reactions. In fact, They've been dubbed the powerhouse of the cell. The chemical energy produced by the mitochondria is stored in a small molecule called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. There are a couple ways that cyanide can affect the body negatively. The primary effect of cyanide is a blocking of the mitochondrial respiration chain and the formation of intracellular adenosine triphosphate. Result, cytotoxic hypoxia caused by the inhibition of CCO by the high affinity of cyanide to the hema A3 of the enzyme. The effect, structural change and reduced activity of the enzyme and an increase and lactate production resulting in metabolic acidosis. So don't freak out. That was a very brief summary of several changes within the mitochondria that take place that we will discuss in future slides. 
So I'll try to explain under 30 seconds how people die from cyanide poisoning. This is a cell. This is the mitochondria. The mitochondria has electron complex chain. Cyanide interferes with complex four and causes cellular death. So you have this complex chain and it's a series of events. And in complex four, you have something called cytochrome C oxidase. It actually is a precursor to complex four. But in complex four, it becomes cytochrome A or cytochrome A3, which leads the, to the production of water and eventually ADP and turning that into ATP. Well, cyanide likes to bind to ferric. We'll talk about that as we move forward. It's never optimal to ingest cyanide. But if you did ingest cyanide, it's either going to bind to the ferric Met hemoglobin, or it's going to bind to the ferric in cytochrome C oxidase. If it binds to the ferric in met hemoglobin, cyanide in met hemoglobin creates cyan met hemoglobin, which through a process with sodium thiosulfate and thiocyanate, it is excreted in the urine, and certain death is usually avoided. When it is absorbed through the ferric in cytochrome C oxidase, there is enzyme inhibition. There is no complex four that is blocked. No complex four means no ATP production. No ATP production means no oxygen binding. And there is a process with that oxygen that is going on in the body, which is anaerobic glycolysis. And anaerobic processes are never optimal. They build up lactic acid and eventually lead to metabolic acidosis. And by a process where the oxygen is not able to be used by the cell, the oxygen backs up. And you can have more than enough oxygen entering the body, but cellular death occurring. Cyanide poisoning does not turn the skin blue per se in and of itself. Initially, a cherry red skin color that changes to dark may be present as a result of increased venous hemoglobin oxygen saturation. So despite the similar name, cyanide does not directly cause cyanosis, although eventually it will. Hydrogen cyanide was first isolated from a blue dye called Prussian blue, which has been known since 1704, but had a structure which was unknown. Radical cyanide in hydrogen cyanide was given its name from the Greek word for blue, again due to its derivation from Prussian blue. Mild symptoms of cyanide poisoning may include headache, nausea, vertigo, anxiety, altered mental status, tachypnea, hypertension, the odor of bitter almonds in the patient's expiration. This is not able to be detected by all providers. In fact, this is a finding that occurs in a very small percentage of the time. However, if you notice an odor that is consistent with that of bitter almonds on the patient's breath, you may be thinking cyanide poisoning. Stimulates to nocio receptors, leading to a brief sensation of dryness and burning in the nose and the throat. In mild degrees, it's recognized as a cause of permanent neurological disability, ranging from various extrapyramidal side effects or symptoms or syndromes to post anoxious vegetative states. Most cases develop over many years, but both Parkinsonian symptoms and a dystonia syndrome have been observed. Severe symptoms of cyanide poisoning include dyspnea, bradycardia, hypotension, arrhythmias, unconsciousness or altered mental status, convulsions, cardiovascular collapse, shock, pulmonary edema or death. The death is due to respiratory arrest with the heart and invariably outlasts respiration. They may actually continue to beat for as long as three to four minutes after the last gasp. So you need to be vigilant with these patients and watch for sudden cardiac arrest. Rhode Island EMS protocols that pertain to the treatment of the patient with cyanide poisoning can be found at 4.18 toxicological emergencies. There are two options. One is hydroxycobalamin and the other is sodium theosulfate. Hydroxycobalamin can be administered by EMT cardiacs or paramedics. 70 milligrams per kilogram with a max dose of 5 grams. 
Admixture is created using 250 milliliters of normal saline, and it's administered over 15 minutes. It may be administered faster in cardiac arrest. Cardiac level providers must call med control for orders. This is a standing order for paramedics. Sodium theosulfate is a paramedic level drug, and it may be administered 12.5 grams. The admixture is created using 100 milliliters D5W and administered over 10 minutes. Hydroxocobalamin is a natural precursor for cyanocobalamin, vitamin B12. Each hydroxocobalamin molecule can deactivate one cyanide ion. Its hydro portion is replaced by the cyanide ion. This results in the formation of non-toxic cyanocobalamin. This allows the cells to use oxygen again. Cyanide is then excreted in the urine. If you remember way back earlier in the presentation about five minutes ago, we talked about cyanide binding to methemoglobin, creating cyanomethemoglobin, and that was eventually excreted in the urine, and in that process, sodium theosulfate made an appearance. Well, this is the synthetic form that we can carry on the ambulances in Rhode Island, it's called sodium theosulfate, and that donates a sulfur atom, and this is necessary for the transformation of cyanohemoglobin to thiocyanate. This increases the endogenous detoxification of cyanide. Theocyanate is then excreted in the urine. Both hydroxocobalamin and sodium theosulfate, along with sodium nitrate, are used in this triangle of treatment at medical facilities. However, EMS in Rhode Island carries the hydroxocobalamin kit and sodium theosulfate. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. We hope that you were able to learn a little bit more about cyanide poisoning than what you may have known previously. EMS providers should always defer to the round statewide emergency medical services protocols or online medical control for treatment options.